Hey, what's going on guys? I've been wanting to do a beginner's guide for a while now and I've finally gotten around to it. These are some things that I felt can really help out new players when they're first starting out. I'm sure it's not a perfect list. I don't think anyone does anything perfectly ever. There is always some room for improvement. If you see a spot where I could do something better, please let me know in the comments below. If it's your first time watching one of my videos, I go by Zoko and I do ESO guides and PvP videos, but I'm also interested in other RPGs and MMOs, specifically Boulder's Gate 3 and Cyberpunk, which are just around the corner. I aim for three videos a week, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays around noon, hopefully. If content like this interests you, please hit that subscribe button below to support me as I work my way towards that 1,000 subscriber milestone. Let's get started. Move to one of the beginner islands. So I got this game somewhat recently again. The last time I played was a few years back on a different platform. Uh, I'd started off in the Skyrim territory when I loaded up my character for the first time because I bought the Greymore edition. And I figured this area wasn't that bad because I was starting in it. If you're just doing the quest though, you're probably going to be okay. But I like to do other world events too around the area. And when I tried to do a Harrowstorm pretty early on, it completely kicked my ass like hard. I ended up completing it after a bunch of other people showed up, but in my opinion it wasn't really worth the trouble at such a low level. So the zone wasn't really for me at this point, and it's probably not going to be very nice to a beginner. Looking at the map though, I realized that the starter islands still allowed me to travel there. They give you the way shrine to all three faction factions islands too. Uh, these zones are designed for new players. They realize you won't have a mount so the whole island can be crossed by running in like two minutes. Very simple quests. So in my opinion, do yourself a favor. Go to one of the faction starter islands and leave the DLC for later on. Use your first three skill points in each of your class's first skills. Putting a skill point into each of your class skills and then slotting them on your bar allows them to be leveled at an equal rate starting out. Skills that are on your bar gain experience for that skill line. The more of a particular discipline you add to the bar, the more XP you gain within that. But you are making things much easier for you later on if you decide to add something from the different class section but have already actually leveled that section up a bit. And this goes with another thing too. You can level a weapon skill line without actually having the weapon equipped. You do this by slotting one of the weapons in one of the weapon skills in your bar. So this is kind of like the class skills things from before, but you won't be able to use that skill because you don't have the weapon on. Early on, you really only need one or two skills for the most part, so you have some room to gain a foundation across the board weapon-wise. Hovering over your skill bar shows how to level certain skills. Again, not all skill lines can be leveled with just slotting the skills gained in it. Also, some skill lines only offer passives, like Ledger Domain, so you wouldn't have anything to slot anyways. If you ever have trouble leveling any particular skill line that you want to be higher in, hovering over the skill bar itself will actually show you what you need to do to gain experience in that skill line. It can be pretty eye-opening for some of them. You should start your horse training immediately. This is very important for, to start early on and stay with it consistently, even if it's just an alt and you aren't actively playing them. If there are upgrades you can make to the mount of a character, I would log on daily to get it started. You may decide later to pick up that class and boom, that mount will be already ready to go and save a ton of headaches as you're cruising through the different zones. It's, it's something you should start as soon as possible. Also, please do not power level if it's your first character, take your time. If you power level your character, you're going to create a headache later on of grinding out skill points. And to be honest, you're missing a pretty rich storyline by doing that. Sure, you can play it later, but would you? I would imagine probably not. Now, I understand if you got a group of buddies that are all doing end game content already and they have that, you know, your friends have a, have a big pull on you in, in MMOs. So if that's what you're aiming for, go for it. MMOs are meant to be played with others anyway, and the game is infinitely more fun with friends. But if you play a good amount of time on your own, then you are doing yourself a disservice. So take your time the first time through. Join the Fighters Guild and Mages Guild to learn Intimidation and Persuasion. This is pretty important early on and saves both time and money in quite a few quests. 
The starter cities like Vocal Guard, Davin's Watch, and Daggerfall each have a Mage's Guild and Fighter's Guild building present, but they are in other cities too. Generally, if you see one, the other is probably nearby. Joining these guilds is definitely one of the first things I do when I get to a town that has these guilds present. Sell the ornate items that you get to the vendor. Some gear you pick up you'll notice has a little bag icon next to the name in your inventory. This increases the value of an item by 280% at a minimum for the common items. It goes up if you find some higher quality, but I usually see this on white gear mostly. Regardless, it's a solid boost to your wallet, and early on, that means a lot. Don't forget about your level up rewards. Some of these are honestly pretty good, and even more so if you're a true beginner, which is what this video is aimed at. The rewards earned for simply leveling up a character can be very, very helpful in maintaining an edge as the world around you scales up as you level up. That's right, the zones scale in this game. Some areas are meant to be more challenging than others, and certain character types may not or may have more trouble taking care of themselves out in the harsh world of Tamriel. But for the most part, as long as your gear is on par with your level, you should be fine. But if you start to outlevel the gear you have equipped, the damage you deal and the armor amount you have will start to go down. So keeping up to date with gear as much as possible makes the grind much, much easier. Also, once you hit level 10 and get your mount, you will need to set it active in the collections tab to be able to use it. Just a pro tip, I guess. If you don't have ESO Plus, make sure to bank your materials. I mean, if you know for sure you don't want to do crafting, then you can hold off on attempting to hang on to any of the materials. But to be honest, I would still personally collect leather or ore to either refine for the high quality tempers or just sell the raw materials themselves. Even if I didn't have crafting, I think I would have the points in those skills alone that give me a chance to extract the high quality stuff when refining. And that kind of leads into the second point that you can access items in your bank across all of your characters. This is extremely helpful if you find a piece of gear on, a, on another character that's better suited for uh, a different one. You can see that my level 17 Templar can see the items that my champion level Nightblade has put into the bank. Now, very few items would be labeled as character bound, but for the most part, materials, armor, and weapons can all be banked and transferred within your character family. Get started researching weapon and armor traits early on, even if you don't necessarily want to do crafting. You never know if you want to get into crafting later. Additionally, if you get a rare piece of gear that has the wrong trait, you will be able to transmute the desired trait onto the equipment provided you have researched it. Now, the only places you can do this is in Clockwork City, which is a DLC, and so you would need ESO Plus or have purchased that DLC itself. Or you belong to a player's guild that has one of these in the guild hall. It's not very hard to find, to be honest. Just ask around. And that reminds me. Join a player's guild. This is the only game that I've ever played that allows you to be in five different guilds. Using the guild finder in game, you can filter on the type of focus you want your guild to have. From just social to trading, PVE, and PVP guilds, there is absolutely something for everyone. Most will have you fill out some short application when you try and apply, so expect something like that most of the time. Buy bag and bank space. The other big headache when starting a character besides mount speed is your inventory size. You can get more space though from a specialty merchant. There are some in the starter cities of Vocal Guard. Uh, there's one in the near, near the bank in Daggerfall and in Davin's Watch in the Market District for Evan Heart Pact. Buying bag space is one of the first things I will do because inventory management, especially early game, uh, is a pain when you are generally picking up everything. This is made even more important if you don't have the crafting bag for ESO Plus and plan on collecting materials as well. You should deconstruct or research everything below CP160. This comes with a few uh, caveats. If the trait is researchable, then research it or keep it for when you are able to if you're already researching something. If it's ornate, sell it. If you know you are going to use it later, then keep it for later, sure. But you should never have loads of gear just chilling in your inventory. Again, I would still do this if I wasn't crafting because I may decide to later. And it's way better if you decide to pick it up and you're just already good to go.
Also, don't buy gear below CP160. Please don't do this. Money pre-160 should only be used on a couple of things, which I'll talk about next. But gear, it's a waste and will definitely be replaced once you get to champion point 160. The first time through, I use gear from quests until I think about 30, when someone from my guild made me a training set of Hunting's Rage for my Stamina Nightblade. Now I realize now I could have easily asked far earlier on. Most people don't give a shit about level 30 mats or earlier materials and will just hand them over without expecting anything. They realize you are low level and aren't going to really be able to offer them much in return. People in this game are honestly pretty helpful. If you come from another MMO, you would probably be surprised at how much someone who doesn't even know you is willing to help out. Public dungeons are an enormous help to getting your character ready to go. When you're doing a public dungeon, make sure to get the Sky Shard and do the group event for a skill point. These are very, very helpful when building up skill points for later, especially if you plan on doing crafting, you're gonna wanna do these when you come across them or even seek them out. I know I did that at one point. Most players at one point or another have multiple skills they need a few more points for, so make sure to plan ahead. And despite the name group event, these are soloable for the most part. They get more challenging in some of the DLC areas, but even those can be done solo or with another player. You don't really need a full group. Occasionally hunt sky shards as you go. This saves a ton of time later on when you need skill points. If you're a new player or maybe just new to a particular class, you generally spend more skill points in these situations because you are trying to find out what works best for you. If you plan on crafting, again, you're even need more skill points and feel like a broken record at this point. Add in all these passives that can support you and you are looking at a hefty chunk of skill points. So it's better to do it as you go. It takes the burden off later. I actually made a video on all the different ways of getting skill points, so check that out if you get a chance. Do your dungeon and battleground dailies. These dailies are pretty much a free level and then some if you do them both. When in the dungeon, make sure to grab the quest if it's your first time there. If someone else in your party gets to the NPC first, it will be shared with you. So be mindful of any messages that pop up. And if you miss that, then going into your notifications tab will allow you to accept it. Another tip, and this applies more so for when you start doing veteran dungeons, but there are websites that explain some of the mechanics of veteran dungeons. Before you tackle a new instance, quickly read up on it. This can save so much frustration in a group, especially since one person has so much impact in a group of four, and dying to an easily preventable situation is never good. At the very least, when you enter the instance, you should say, you haven't done it yet, it's my first time here. This gives you a cushion if you make a mistake, and a lot of people will explain stuff as you go. Again, people in this game will surprise you. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to check me out on Twitch and drop me a follow if you get a chance. The link is in the description. And again, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe for more ESO and RPG content in the future. A like and comment does wonders as well. Until next time, take care.